Let me just say right up front, before you judge this video by the title, take a few minutes to start watching it and listen to what the video is actually about. <laughs> Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is usually all about frivolous handbag things. Today is different. We are going to get quite a bit deeper than we usually do. I've done videos like this before. I'll link some of those below where we dive deeper into some of these topics and you guys seem to, uh, I was gonna say enjoy them, but that's probably not the right word. Appreciate them is probably more accurate. So I hope that you appreciate this too. Let me start by telling you why I decided to take up this topic on my channel. Basically, it was having this conversation here was triggered by some things that I've been seeing on Facebook. So you know that on Facebook there are some groups for luxury handbag companies, like there are Louis Vuitton groups, there are Hermes groups, Dior groups, whatever it may be. Over the last few days I've seen a few people who have posted about Louis Vuitton stores and I saw one Hermes store that has been looted, right? People as part of the protests are breaking into the stores and stealing merchandise. And something that has really bothered me about these posts is that they keep being deleted by the administrators of those groups. Now those are private groups. The administrators can do whatever they want. I would argue some of the people who I've seen, these aren't administrators, but other people commenting, have said things like, this is a Louis Vuitton group. You're supposed to talk about things related to Louis Vuitton. Well, I think a Louis Vuitton store being robbed, whatever word you want to use, is Louis Vuitton related. How is it not? And these groups are about buying, selling, and chatting. A lot of people seem to forget that there is a chat part to the group. So in my opinion, like if I was running one of these groups, I would not be shutting these conversations down. I think these are important conversations to be had. I think that people can learn a lot from each other by having these conversations. And maybe some minds will even be changed. So since the administrators of those groups are not allowing those conversations to be had there, even though quite a few people want to have those conversations there, I thought, well, maybe I have this platform. Maybe there are people who would want to have the conversation on this channel and in the comment section below. So I'm going to talk in this video about some of the things that have been going on, some of my opinions about these things, and I want to start by letting you know who's talking here, what my perspective is. Because a lot of us like to boil people down to race and gender. A lot of that is happening right now. But as we all know, people are much more complicated and multifaceted than that. So I am coming to you as a white female. However, I'm also coming to you as a white female who has a background of poverty, a father who is a drug addict and who is in and out of prison and who is homeless. I'm coming to you as a person who lives in Houston, which is the most diverse city in the United States. The only other place I've lived was New York City, which is also incredibly diverse. I'm coming to you as a teacher of a group of very diverse students. I'm coming to you as a YouTuber who talks to people from all over the world. I'm also coming to this conversation as a first generation college graduate and also just a second generation high school graduate. My mother graduated high school, my father did not. He got a GED in prison. My grandparents did not. And after high school, I went on to get two undergraduate degrees, one in painting and one in psychology. And I'm also coming to you as someone who has been through a PhD program in social personality psychology and in this particular program, our focus was on marginalized populations, specifically gender and race. I want to acknowledge that, of course, I will never have the experience of being a black person growing up in America, so I can never understand that experience as much as people who are black and race in America can. However, I do have an education in it, at least. I am perhaps more informed than the average person. Social justice, racial injustice are things that I spent years studying. And there are a lot of things that I recognize as injustice that a lot of people don't. Now that I've said that, let me say this. I'm of the strong belief that George Floyd was murdered. We saw this video, most of us are outraged by it, and I hope that most of us understand 
why people are protesting. I also hope most of us remember so many of the other stories of injustice when it comes to black people and police officers. I am not anti-police. I am anti-injustice. I'm anti-racism. And this morning as I was browsing Facebook and I saw some of those posts in the groups that got deleted, I've also been coming across posts from people I know, whether I know them well or I barely know them, that are racist or that incite violence. And I chose this morning to do something that I rarely do, and that was to address some of these people and the posts that they chose to put up. So I want to tell you about a couple of those. One, there's a woman who I barely know. I've just met her a few times through an organization that I was part of, and she posted an album of photos. Now this was not something that she created, it was something that she reposted from someone else's Facebook page. These photos were, I believe they were just in Minneapolis of the protest going on there. It was maybe eight or ten photos or so, and they consisted of photos of buildings and cars on fire, businesses that had been looted, windows broken into, and stores destroyed and things stolen. The only people in any of these photos were all black. And that immediately gave me much pause because I have been watching hours of coverage of these protests every day for the past several days. And one of the things I immediately noticed was how diverse these groups of protesters are. Another thing I've noticed is that the vast majority of the protesters are behaving very peacefully. Turn on just about any footage of these protests and you will see that most of the people walking around in the background behind the reporters are just walking around and a lot of them are just taking photos with their phones or taking video with their phones. Not many are being confrontational. Most of the people I've seen who are being confrontational or aggressive, some people would define it that way. I would not in this stance, I would call it more passionate and very justified passion given everything that's happened and that so little has been done to make change. Even those people who are being passionate are still being peaceful. They are not inciting any kind of violence. There are most certainly people who are are, and I would use these words, rioting and looting. From what I have been able to tell watching these hours of footage, and from what I have heard reported from various sources, these seem to be separate groups. The protesters and the people causing destruction appear to be separate groups. The people causing destruction seem to be people who are taking advantage of the situation and the potential chaos, and they're adding to the chaos, by doing things like burning down independent businesses, which makes no sense to me. I can understand why they would target the Minneapolis Police Department in this situation, why they burned down that building. I can even understand why they would loot the target across the street, given that we are also dealing with this worldwide pandemic and so many people in America are unemployed. If I was desperate enough, I might go into that target and take some food and clothing and whatever I might need, or even take things that I could sell on the internet to make money to get food and whatever else I might need, pay my rent, for example. I mean, if I was desperate enough, that's something maybe I would consider. I don't know, fortunately, I've never been in that situation. And I'm not condoning it, I'm just saying I can kind of understand. What I have trouble understanding is why people would damage small businesses. Small businesses that aren't necessarily going to have the resources to rebuild. I don't understand the burning of people's cars. I don't get it. I don't understand the looting of places like Louis Vuitton. To me, that just seems like there is a small group of people who's taking advantage of this situation to go be thieves. It would seem to me that those people were probably thieves before these protests, or criminals of some sort, which is a whole other story that I won't even go into about why people might feel the need to do that instead of do something more legitimate. But I talked about there was somebody who posted on Facebook these photos of rioting, looting, and only black people. And I had a problem with that and I felt the need to say something about it. So I commented, I wrote about a paragraph, and I said that the first thing that struck me when I saw these photos that she reposted was that the people were only black and that the footage I've seen shows very diverse people. I said that these photos to me paint a wildly inaccurate picture of the reality of what's going on, and they paint a racist picture. I also told this person that I went to the Facebook page 
of the person who originally created this album of photos. And it was very clear that this person was a proud racist and either a supporter or a member of a group called the Boogaloo Boys, which I have been hearing about in the news lately as being, among other things, a white supremacist group who is traveling to these protests to create more chaos, more destruction for their own purposes that have nothing to do with George Floyd's murder or any of the other situations that we've had with black people and officers and social injustice. And this group, the Boogaloo Boys, I found this on their Facebook page. This is a public page. So who knows what's actually on their private group page. But this is an example of the kind of thing that they promote. This says, I might not be able to fight, but I can feed the Boog Boys, the Boogaloo Boys, and misplace some ammonium-rich fertilizer for them. Well, we all know what that means, what that's referring to, which is bomb making. And this to me represents domestic terrorism, does it not? So I posted that as a comment under that photo album that she reposted. And then I went back to Facebook and kept scrolling and I found this image. And I thought, oh, that's very relevant to what I just posted. So I went back to her page and I posted this in that comment section right under my previous comment and I said when I posted this that I wanted to be clear that my comments were directed more at this original poster who made the album and not necessarily at her because I don't know her well enough to know her intention in posting the album. Because let's be real here, there are a lot of white people who would post that album and it won't even occur to them that there's anything racist about it. So when I went back and posted that, I noticed that my original post wasn't there anymore. So I made another comment and I said, what happened to my other post? She said she deleted it because, <sighs> this is where my brain exploded. She said she deleted my original post that called out the photos for being racist because they only depicted black people among a very diverse group. She said she deleted that because this isn't about race. It's hard to even know where to go from there. <laughs> I think in a lot of instances, I would have just walked away from it, but I pushed on. I said it's 100% about race for all the reasons I just outlined, but that it's your page, you can do what you want. And I thought it was sad that she didn't want to have a conversation about this. Her response was that she didn't research the post, she just agreed with the guy said. He said something about, you know, the typical thing that people are saying when they're not looking deeper into it, about how these people are destroying their city, you know, writing and all that. So I wrote back, well maybe you should research it so that you're not spreading the skewed messages of white supremacists. After that, she deleted the entire post, photos and everything, which is good. So at least that's one less place where that misinformation is being spread. And I unfriended her. I don't do that very often, but this is someone I don't know well. Her comment that this is not about race. I mean, how do you deal with that? I just, oh my God, it's so frustrating. And I mean, let's keep this in perspective. That's a tiny thing compared to all the other things that are going on that are much worse. But this sort of thing is part of what contributes to all the worst things that are going on. I guess it's because of the education that I have. I'm just still boggles my mind when I come across things that are so blatantly racist and the people posting them don't even realize they're racist or they deny that it's racist. It is maddening. A lot of white people don't even realize that they have privilege, especially if they have grown up poor or are poor currently. And I've seen this thing floating around on Facebook many times and it's popped up again lately in the midst of all this. And it says something like, white privilege doesn't mean that you are privileged financially. It just means that your whiteness, your race, doesn't make anything worse for you. And I think that's a good starting place for a lot of people to begin understanding what white privilege actually is. And I've seen other posts on Facebook where people are posting you know, a lot of the posts that I'm seeing are about the worst things that are being done by these small, relatively small groups of people compared to all the protesters, the people who are creating chaos and destruction. It's a small group, but most of the social media posts I'm seeing are about those people and not about the rest of it, which is overall very peaceful. So I'll see things like a video of 
some people smashing windows on a cop car, which I don't think they should be doing. It's not something that I would do, but I also understand it, right? Given everything. And the comments from people I know, and these people do not surprise me with these comments, do after all live in the South, in Texas, in a very pro-gun part of the country. And I'm not anti-gun, but I'm also not pro-gun. I'm, I'm not a gun person. But the response, and this has been just about the only response I've seen from these people that I know, is shoot them. Or this is why people need AR-15s with 30 rounds. So these people, I'm talking specifically about these people that I know, I'm not trying to generalize any wider than that. These people claim to be law-abiding citizens, they claim to be patriotic Americans, they claim to be Christian, and yet their response to this is to murder people. That makes sense how? That's a solution how? And can I also just say, putting aside the rioting, the fires, the destruction of property, the looting that, like I said, is being done by a small group of people, many of whom are not even part of these protests but are coming from other places. And just considering the protesting that's being done by the masses, the vast majority of people who are being peaceful, the protests that we saw in Michigan with the white guys and all their guns going into the Capitol building, with what appeared to be the specific intent of intimidating, to me that's a lot worse than anything I've seen on the news about the majority of these protests. And I could say the same for some of the other anti-lockdown protests that I saw. The way that some people were treating medical professionals who were standing there with people yelling in their faces and spitting at them, and it's really despicable. And of course there are things like this. This is a meme that I saw on Facebook today. It says, it's disturbing to see what rioters are doing to Minneapolis. Oh wait, these were the Eagles fans after they won the Super Bowl. I really appreciate a lot of these memes that call out the hypocrisy that have to do with race, where white people and black people can do the same thing, but somehow it's worse when black people do it, and there are totally different consequences in many cases. And one of my problems, one of my difficulties with understanding why there's still so much racism, why there are so many white people specifically who are still so ignorant about this, I grew up hearing racist things from people around me, some people in my family, but it never made sense to me. I've never been of that bent. And I saw this on Facebook today, and it looks like it was originally on Twitter. It said, I grew up hearing and learning racist, sexist, and homophobic things. In my early adolescence, I thought for myself and unlearned it too. It's 2019, well now it's 2020, and there's no excuse. There's a bad word in there. There's no excuse to be racist, sexist, or homophobic. You were raised that way, unlearn it. It's not rocket science. And by the way, how about that rocket launch yesterday? That was pretty awesome. And I completely agree with that. I, It's one of the most frustrating things to me when adults haven't bothered to take the time to educate themselves on things like not being racist, not being hateful, not being hypocrites. And specifically here, and I'm thinking specifically about people I know, not trying to generalize wider than that, I know a lot of people who claim to be Christian who are also quite racist. And that is very... those don't mesh. And these people also make violent comments. It's very hypocritical. And we're all hypocritical in our own ways, but that's just such a huge obvious one. It's never made sense to me. Now back to these Facebook groups, the posts that I have seen on the like the Louis Vuitton groups where people are talking about the stores being looted, a couple of the posts I was able to read through the comments before they were deleted, and I was surprised and not surprised that there were some people who were criticizing the original post and saying things like, oh you shouldn't care about luxury right now, you shouldn't care about places like Louis Vuitton, they have insurance, what you need to care about is George Floyd and this whole situation. Well, in a way that's true, but I have to go back to my argument toward the beginning of this video that none of us are one-dimensional. Human beings are very multifaceted. We are deep. There's a lot to us. So it is possible to care about George Floyd, all of this, the protests, and still be interested, curious, care about Louis Vuitton being looted, especially when we're on a Louis Vuitton group 
and that's what we're talking about is Louis Vuitton. And then I'm confused about the people that are criticizing people talking for Louis Vuitton when they themselves are in a Louis Vuitton group, so that didn't make a lot of sense to me. Are they trying to say that the only thing we should be talking about right now is George Floyd and the protests and social justice? Because that's just not reality. So after all this, and after the last few days, and after the last few decades that I have been around to observe things, and after all the history that I know about civil rights, I'm left with the question of what can I do? Because I'm left feeling pretty helpless to do anything. Yes, I'm outraged by this murder. I'm outraged by all the other murders that came before it. I'm outraged by the incident in Central Park earlier this week with the man who asked the woman to put her dog on a leash and she went nuts and called the police, falsely claiming that an African-American man was threatening her life. And Mr. Cooper handled all that so well. And in the interviews that I've seen with him since, he's handled it so well, better than so many of us would. He's been so gracious with the woman that he saw in the park, who, by the way, from the very beginning, should have had that dog in a leash. It's a bit of a pet peeve of mine, especially since I live in an apartment building and I have dogs and we deal with dogs off leash when they shouldn't be all the time. But being white, nobody ever calls the cops on me when I call them out for it. Back to this question of what can we do because we feel pretty helpless. Well, a lot of people are in the streets protesting. That's certainly one thing to do. And I've seen memes like this, which remind you of all the other peaceful protests that have come before the ones that are happening now. And it just seems like nothing works. And that's very frustrating. So what do we have to do for something to work? And what is it going to look like when it does work? And I don't know. I don't have the answers. If you guys have any ideas, please feel free to leave those in the comment section. That's one of the most frustrating things to me about it is that I don't know what I can do as an individual to help solve this problem and make racism in America go away. Because it's pretty ingrained in our culture. One thing we can do is have conversations like this, and conversations that are respectful of each other, conversations where the point is to educate one another, not to bash one another. And that's what I want to see in the comment section. If you are new to my channel, new to me, and you don't know this already, on all of my videos, I have them all set where I have to approve comments before they go live, and that'll be no different with this video. I started doing that because I'm a teacher, and there were a few comments that really weren't even related to my channel, but they were graphic, violent threats. Uh, this was a few years ago, and sometimes my students watch my channel, and my students do not need to see things like that. So that's why I set comments to be approved approved before everybody else sees them. So I'm just going to say up front, I'm not going to approve every comment. I will approve the ones that are respectful, that are educational. I'll, I'll approve most of them, I'm sure. It'll just be the ones where people are being mean to each other. Any comments that promote violence in some way, those aren't going to be allowed in my comment section. So we can have conversations like this. Um, I mean, for me, educating yourself on these issues. You know, if you're Black in America, you're already educated on it. If you're white, you'll never be able to be educated in the same way, so you have to get a different kind of education. Recognize your privilege. Do what you can in your private life, whether it's calling out people you know on Facebook, having conversations with people in real life, going to the protests. I'm not going to the protests. That's mainly because of the fact that we're still going through a worldwide pandemic. And I live with someone who's in a higher risk category, and I'm also grocery shopping for another person who's in a higher risk category, so I can't go put myself at risk in that way and possibly bring that home. What I can do is create this platform to have a conversation. Being a teacher, my students have conversations about race sometimes. I can contribute in that way as well. For the most part, my philosophy there is to let them have the conversations on their own, and for me not to inject my views. I want them to think for themselves, come to their own conclusions. When I feel the need to step in, I can do that and kind of question some of the things they're saying respectfully or try to steer conversation in one direction, but I don't just preach to them, lecture to them. I can also be kind. I can be aware of any biases that I have and do my best to overcome them. As far as the ingrained, institutionalized racism that we very clearly have here in America, I don't know what to do about that as an individual. I can vote. That's important. We have someone in the White House right now who made it clear from day one of announcing his presidential run that he was racist and 
just fine with it. So if being anti-racist is important to you, then voting should be important to you. And I'm sure once I stop filming and once I've done editing, I'm going to come up with all kinds of things I wish I had said in this video. And I'm sure you guys are going to have comments and questions that are going to point out things that I left out meant to say. So I'll do my best to explain my shortcomings in those comments. I've made a couple of really basic notes for this video, but mostly I'm just talking off the top of my head here, train of thought, probably pretty obvious. And if you've made it this far through the video, I appreciate it and I'll appreciate whatever contributions you want to make to this conversation in the comment section. Please remember to be kind to everyone. Help educate us all. White people, if you have questions, don't be afraid to ask. I know I have a lot of very respectful people on this channel who can help educate. And if you ask a question that you feel stupid asking that some Someone who has the ability to answer it isn't going to put you down for that, but is going to try to give you an answer to the question you're asking so that you can deepen your understanding of these very complicated issues. So thanks for watching this far. I appreciate it. I do hope that you are doing well in all aspects of your life. Same for your loved ones, family and friends. I'll get back to handbag videos frivolous handbag videos in my next video, which will be a collab with Yota, and I hope to see you back here for that. Have a fantastic day. Well, have the most fantastic day you can, considering all this. Bye.